Hey, what's up guys? Skywood here today. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a video review and kind of benchmark of an AMD, or MSI in this case, Radeon HD 7770 graphics card. So I got this, um, I bought this off of a friend of mine for about $50, considering the 80 or 90 that they run for, I would think that's a pretty good deal. And I bought it in a perfectly working condition, I had to use this to stand it up. But anyway, so basically I got the card mainly because I was going to buy it and resell it to my friend, hopefully make a little money off of it. But besides the point, I'm really going to actually try and test this card and see is this card even usable in a 2017. So I'm filming this in April of 2017 for anyone who's running for the tests. So anyway, um, now according to AMD's website, I'll go ahead and give the specifications of the card. This is... A, the uh, engine clock or the CPU clock or the graphics chip clock of this card is at 1 gigahertz. It has 1 gigabyte of GDDR5 memory. There is 2 gigabyte cards, just by the way. Um, the memory clock is about 1125 megahertz. It's uh, GDDR5, like I said. Um, it runs at about 1.2, or the single precision compute power, according to their website, is about uh, uh, 1.28 terafl teraflops, so pretty good performance for the ca card. But anyway, so that's just a few of the specs out of the way. The card does run pretty pretty light on the system. I think you can run this on like a 350, 400 watt PSU. And on top of that, all it really requires is a single uh, six pin PCI connector and you're good there. Now this is a single fan card. And as you can see here, compared up to the Apple charging brick um, at about a foot of distance, the card is certainly much smaller than my GTX 970. But anyway, so that's besides the point. I'm gonna go on ahead and test this card. So as we can see, it has it is not a fanless GPU. I don't see why you should have a fanless GPU as of 2017. It has a pretty small heatsink in there, especially compared to my GTX 970 in my machine now. And for ports on the back, we have Display Port, HDMI, and DVI, which will work perfectly with my cinema display. But anyway, so I'm gonna go on ahead, get this card all hooked up, and well, I guess I'll show you guys the process of hooking it up. So yeah. All right guys, so it looks like everything's in the shot. So here we go, so we have the uh, MSI card right here. I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm actually going to uh, remove my GTX 970, so here it is. And yes, for anyone who is wondering, um, hold on, let me take you guys out of the tripod right quick. I do still have the uh, GTX 970 car, so that's pretty cool. Um, for anyone who was curious about that. Um, anyway, let's see, gosh, I really can't get a good reviewing angle now, can I? Can I? Maybe I can, I don't know. I don't know. That should be good enough. Anyway, so basically I'm going to go on ahead and remove the card. Um, let's see. So i got to get in there and remove a few of these uh, mounting brackets. And, or well, at least i got to get this one off. I know. So, yeah, this is, um, okay. So there we go. So we got the little uh, screw hole bracket out. We're going to go on ahead, loosen our fan connector. We're going to remove our um, PCI power connection pins. And we're going to unplug the GTX 970. Now keep in mind, if you get a GTX 970, all you need is a two-fan card. A three-fan is absolutely unnecessary. I'm just an idiot. It's the only reason I have a three-fan card. Trust me, you don't need one on a GTX 970. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and install the uh, much smaller uh, Radeon HD 7770. God, this thing is so much smaller. Anyway, um, it's not quite as powerful, though. This thing only has a fourth of the video memory. Core clock's a little slower. I think the memory bandwidth is about the same speed, though. Um, anyway, so this is just going to require a lot of fiddling. And for anyone who's wondering, yes, this is a very similar process to what I showed in my, uh, let's see. Um, oh well, that was actually a lot simpler than I was expecting. Nice. And now all you need is the six pin power connector. Actually, that one would actually twist over the top like this. And that's all it seems we really need to do there. Card seated down well enough. Um, all right, and I think we are good. All right, so um, okay, well the rest of that stuff's unnecessary. All I gotta do is put that bracket back in. Anyway, so there you go. So I have the card in my machine now, and I'm gonna go on ahead and start um, running a few benchmarks on it, and I'll put I'll post those up on the end if uh, you guys decide to skip to the end on this. But anyway, so I do have a few updates also about graphics cards in the Mac Pro and under Mac OS. This is gonna be under Windows, of course. So anyway, I'm gonna go on ahead and uh, get the computer all set back up, and I will be back. Alright guys, I'm back, and as you can see, I actually just got um, everything of the Mac Pro already hooked up and stuff. That's pretty nice. Oh, my uh, little tripod stand just kind of fell down on itself. My bad. There we go. You guys are all back in frame now. So we're about to see if this all works. I think I'll probably, I will need a driver for this. I don't have any AMD drivers remotely on my uh, Mac Pro. I'll adjust my monitor over. Well, there you go. So the video card is working, that's good, because I bought this from a friend of mine over the internet I haven't met at all in person before. So we'll see. 
That is, yeah, oh, well, hold on. We have a creator's update going. Um, violation of privacy, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna go on ahead and just let that get all finished. I'll get the driver loaded and I'll be back. All right, there we go. We got the driver. Actually, oh, I was a little zoomed in. Uh, Windows actually found the driver itself, so that was pretty surprising, but anyway. So as you guys can see here, it has one gigabyte of dedicated VRAM. It's taking eight gigs from the system for use. I don't know why it needs that. As you can see, Radeon 7700 series. Um, let's see, but uh, there you go. Driver, it's last signed in 2016. I can update that driver, but it seems to work. So anyway, so that's pretty cool. So there we go. I'm gonna go on and zoom out. I'll go on ahead. I'm not gonna make a video about this. I'm gonna put the benchmarks at the end. I'm gonna record. Okay, use. I can't uh, stabilize this for some reason. I'm going to record the benchmarks, the temperatures, and stuff. I'll get MSI Afterburner up and running. I don't have any video recording software unless that does that. I'm not sure. So anyway, um, I'll go on ahead and see if I can get video results of this for some of the better parts. I don't know. Anyway, so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Um, this is my little bit of a I guess a review of the uh, Radeon HD 7 77. 700 such such a bad name <laughs> anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys in the next video and actually a few announcements to make about the uh, mac pro gpu thing let me take my phone out of the tripod actually I'll talk to you guys about this a lot more interesting oh, damn it. i can't get that out very easily anyway it's one of those clip things by the way that's what i'm using so move the tripod out of the way the mac pro mac os just got pascal support or beta support for the uh nvidia gpu so it means that the 1050 1050 Ti, 1060, 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, Titan X, and Titan XP will work in Mac OS with a beta driver. On the Mac Pro, on any Hackintosh build, you can now get your precious Pascal GPUs that you bought a while ago thinking they would work in a, in a in Mac OS. Well, they do now. Anyway, so I do still have the GTX 970. Of course, I'm still perfectly satisfied with that card. I would recommend that card, actually, if you can find it for less than 130 bucks. But anyway, so... Like I said, I really do hope you guys enjoy. Um, I'll get benchmarks up on the end of this, and I will see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.